Hi there, thanks for joining me today. I want to look at how the stock and bond markets matter for you. If you have a 401k or an IRA, you are invested in the market. And my view of the stock and bond markets, it's one way to create a source of income. And I'll talk more about that in future videos, but it's one way, not the only way, to create retirement income. For decades now, since the 401k was launched back in 1980, what that did was it shifted retirement savings directly to workers, directly to individuals. And I even met people who actually have 401ks, and they're very disconnected from what these actually are, though, and they say, I'm not in the market. And I think maybe there's this idea among some people that to be in the market means you're out there trading stocks. No, if you have a 401k, you're in the market. And this is crucial for your future, your eventual retirement, and how you want your life to look down the road. And yes, this is one of these discussions of what happens when we get past this immediate corona pandemic that we're all in right now at the moment. Looking ahead, what your future is going to be like and how your investments factor into that. Now, what we've just experienced is a big setback for retirement savers. As I'm speaking here today, the market was up triple digits today uh, on hope that maybe the pandemic has peaked in the U.S. I don't know. I don't know. You see a lot of hopium out there. I've been saying for a couple weeks now we could easily, easily... Uh, not be anywhere near the market bottom for this particular correction. So just be prepared for that. So what we have, though, let me just put the 2020 action in perspective for you. The first three months of the year were the worst for the S&P since 2008, just 12 years ago. Most of us remember that. It was the worst for the Dow Jones Industrial Average since 1987. But what really counts now, and always counts at any time, is the investments, the stocks and bonds, the funds that you actually hold in your portfolio. And it sounds cheesy, I know it, but it's true. If you hold a well-diversified group of both stocks and bonds, you probably probably will not lose as much in a downturn as a person who lacks diversification. I've seen it, actually. I've seen that before. People who are way too heavily invested in stocks, for example, tend to lose a lot more in a correction. And that's just because stocks are riskier than bonds. They also tend to return more than bonds over time as well. So you get the good and the bad. I do understand, though, if you're watching this and you're in the market, you may be thinking, well, I've already lost more due to corona here in the market, in the equity markets, the bond markets, than I feel like I can handle. It's already stressing me out. So today, what I'm doing is going to be the first in probably a three-part series about asset allocation strategies. And you can still change course. Even if today is not the day to go shuffling things around, you can still change course and fix things in your portfolio. And one of the things that I've done for clients for years is to use funds that include stocks and bonds from all around the world and representing different industries, all the different S&P sectors, you want all of those in there, as well as companies of all different sizes. That's sort of the cornerstone of diversification right there. But the bottom line is, whatever it is you own, whatever the holdings are, it has to be comfortable for you. It's sometimes called the sleep at night factor. Again, that's a little corny, but I've used it too. And I get that right now are nervous times. But I'm talking bigger picture, something not just for right now, but for the coming years. And it's a strategy that anticipates a market decline of 50%. Financial advisors get a bad rap because people think, and these are people who have never worked with advisors, they're just sort of the, the chorus out there in social media. A lot of these people 
don't know any better and they think that financial advisors always anticipate markets going up, up, up all the time. But nothing could be further from the truth. That's ridiculous. Especially if you have a plan and if your advisor makes it clear to you that not every year will be up and that is factored into your plan in the form of showing you annualized returns. Now, I, I get it. The idea of risk management is understanding what kind of loss you can live with in any given year or possibly multi-years. I've done money management and financial planning for enough clients over time and I know this. It's really hard to keep your emotions in check when things get bad like right now versus what you said when you very calmly filled out that risk assessment quiz because that seems academic. And now the rubber has really met the road. I totally understand that. So I want to wrap up today with a look at some basic allocations. And for some of you, this is super simple and repetitive, but it's new information for a lot of other people. So let's take a look at a website from a company called Vanguard, which uses, which specializes in low-cost asset allocation ETFs. Okay, so here we are looking at the page from Vanguard, and it says portfolio allocation models. Yeah, I know that sounds a little jargony, but I think once I show you this, it'll make a little more sense. This first portfolio, 100% bonds, tends to be, well, it is, a lot less riskier and a lot less return than stocks over time. The reason I sounded like I was doing a qualifier there is because if you use what's called high yield bonds, they have risk and return profiles similar to stocks. I don't like high yield bonds. You might as well just use stocks. I would recommend a portfolio of short-term high quality bonds. That's what I like to use in client portfolios. So you see right here, average historical return, 5.3%, best year 1982, worst year 1969, 14 out of 93 years of the loss. Okay, so that shows you not every year, even in a pretty conservative style portfolio, not every year is going to have a gain. And in particular, typically speaking, this year we've seen a few differences there. We've seen stocks and bonds down simultaneously. But the majority of the time, over time periods, if stocks are up, bonds will be down, vice versa. Okay, you see here, 30, 70. Let's just scroll down and use this one. 30% stocks, 70% bonds. This might be something for uh, a retiree, say, and again, I'm not making recommendations. These are just for illustration purposes. Say you have a retiree, maybe who doesn't have a lot of money that she can put in the market and risk but she does want some market exposure to grow the value of her account over time. So in that case, you might use 30% stocks, 70% bonds. You can see that that's a little riskier than 100% bonds, but less risky than something like 100% stocks. I'll get to some of those in just a minute. So the average historical return, according to this data compiled by Vanguard, 1926 through 2018, 7.1%. 15 out of 93 years with a loss. But again, really kind of focus on this number right here, the 7.1%. Let's go down to something balanced. Now, the typical one you always hear about, right, is the 60-40 portfolio. 60% stocks, 40% bonds. That's kind of the workhorse of portfolio allocation, one of the more common ones you will see. And there's a reason for that, because it does deliver the kind of return that enables many retirees to have a successful outcome. And by successful outcome, I mean you don't die before your money dies. In other words, your money outlives you. That's what you want. There's an old joke I've heard that ideally you want the check to the funeral home to bounce. That means you've managed your money exactly the right way. You've timed it correctly. But really, in reality, what you want to do is have your money outlast you, okay? Then you have estate planning, of course, but separate issue. Okay, now, say you're a little younger, maybe you're uh, you or your children, maybe in their 20s, and you want to have, you say, hey, I've got time, I can take some risk. That's, that's true. 
Um, if you have a portfolio of 80% stocks, 20% bonds, average annual return 9.4%, and you see it's riskier than these bond portfolios. Let me scroll right back up. You see these all bond portfolios, 14 of 93 years with a loss, 13 of 93, 15 of 93. As you start adding stocks, you see this years with a loss, 17% for a 40, 60, 18 for 18 out of 93, rather, for a 50-50. You get up to the traditional 60-40 portfolio, 22 out of 93, okay? And again, so on and so forth. You do risk more with stocks. A portfolio of 100% stocks, years with a loss, 26 of 93, average annual return, 10.1%. You know, there's a uh, an investment guru out there who for years, not an investment guru, he's really a get-out-of-debt guru, uh, he tells people, get in good growth stock mutual funds. You get a 12% a year return. I don't know what he's talking about, and neither does anybody that's done proper financial planning. But the point is, if you are approaching retirement, something like this with 100%, 80%, 70% stocks, usually, in most cases, not appropriate for you, because you run the risk of more losses right in the years where you need to be drawing down income from your portfolio. Very treacherous position to be in and not something that you will hear any good planner recommend. So that's part one of my video of asset allocation today. Pretty basic for a lot of you, I know. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time.